Fairy Tale Wonder Years Quest Chapter 127 is out, and this was a quick, solid chapter. Not too much happened. I laughed a couple of times, but it sets up what this arc is seemingly going to be about, and I'm honestly pretty curious about it. I'm probably going to go through this relatively quickly, as again, not too much of note happened. Now, first off, I'm sorry I missed Chapter 126. I was dealing with copyright issues, so I wasn't able to upload for a solid two weeks, and I ended up missing the Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest last chapter so poor timing is all that happened but i'm here with chapter 127 so let's just hit that intro and get right into the chapter Chapter 127 of Hundred Years Quest, titled Code of the Coal Miner Guild. This is relevant for literally four pages. So in the previous chapter, Natsu, after coming into the city, ends up bumping into a bunch of coal miners. And this coal miner ends up being called Gagarok. He seems to not be important. As he basically insults Natsu for being a wizard, thinking that because they use magic, they're all, you know, gangly. And Natsu literally just pictures Helfman. <laughs> Loxus and Tro Troy, Troy, I think it was his name. Which, yeah, unless you're like Warren, you're not exactly the gang. You're not exactly uh, weak in fairy tale. But yeah, they basically go over each of the coal miner guilds' code rules, which I am not going to name one at a time because it's literally just one big gag. I'm, I doubt it's not going to be relevant in this chapter, like at all. He starts to swing his axe and stuff like that. And then, when he gets to rule number four, is just get rid of anything in sight as he launches an attack at Natsu, crumbling the ground beneath them. Seemingly impressing Natsu as this guy then begins to throw rocks and debris at him, but Natsu just nonchalantly dodging, asking, did I do something? And look, this is Natsu, obviously there's the chance that he would piss somebody off without realizing. But this guy just keeps hitting his pickaxe at the ground multiple times, with Natsu being very confused. But turns out that he's doing this on purpose because this axe is made from, from, from alchemy. And with each hit he does against the ground, it starts to heat up and build up so he can land a strong blow. And Natsu basically remembers that Lucy basically tries to tell him to read the atmosphere a bit. And he figures, seems like it kind of pisses this guy off without knowing it. But if he's picking a fight, I gotta give him one. And this coal miner, Gagarok, is so proud of his warmed up axe, he then lunges at Natsu to try and kill him. Basically, he gets pissed off and tries to yank, hit his head off with a pickaxe. With one of the guys basically saying, hey, wait, 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 we're supposed to take him in alive, man. We're supposed to bring him back. But Gagarok doesn't listen and he hits Natsu in the face, which Natsu didn't budge as he literally melted the pickaxe with his just sheer flaming temperature on contact. The man melted an entire arena and the clothes of everyone in that one arena after a two year time skip. A pickaxe isn't gonna do shit against him. And with the coal miners just being like, uh, what, what just happened? Natsu just goes all Saitama and basically does a serious sneeze, blowing away everyone and just causing massive damage to the city. It's not fairy tale if Natsu doesn't destroy an entire city block. Honestly, this had me rolling. I like it when Natsu just accidentally destroys stuff. We then cut over to another portion of the city, where this old man, just wondering what all the fuss is about, but then looks over at his Polaroid camera and sees that he actually did his job. And turns out he trapped Urza and Jalal in a picture, seemingly. And they're very cramped in it. So Urza figures maybe she should get rid of her armor, but when she does that, she accidentally gets rid of all of her clothes. You know what? Obligatory fan service moment. But Jalal is very lucky. Should have been me. It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. But anyway, Urza just turns into her like usual like samurai attire, and they realize that they can use magic in the space, and maybe they can end up using it to escape. We then cut over to Gray and Wendy with the alchemy guy that he met previously in the Dr. Mog arc. And this guy is basically trying to capture them, and he basically swamps them with materials. With an ability called Material Bond, swapping Grey, Wendy, and Carla with three jewels. As these three turned into jewels, they're still very conscious, they can talk, but their bodies are now 
in a material guild or a coal guild or, or something. So yeah, you literally swapped the, their souls with something else and they swapped places. So you basically just caught them fairly easily and now he's heading them back to HQ. And he wonders, huh, that was pretty easy, all things considered. And he's wondering how everyone else is doing, and if he and if they caught the rest of the fairy tale. Smash cut to Lucy getting knocked out by knockout gas and tied up with her and Happy. So, yeah. Honestly, how are you gonna predict knockout gas? I hate that Lucy was taken out so early in the arc. I hate that everybody was captured right away. But, yeah, honestly, not too much going on. Natsu is then back at the end with Sabretooth, and I'm wondering, why is everyone late? And Sting brings up, yeah, if you figure someone to be late or lose track of time, it'd be Natsu. Lecter brings up that Bertha in particular is very punctual about time, and Rogue's starting to get very worried about them. Yukino states that they should probably go out looking, but Minerva tells her to stop because she's curious about something. She questions Natsu about the coal miners guild that attacked them, as he just says, yeah, I just burned them all up. She brings up the fact that they were after Fairy Tail. they only attacked after confirming that he was from Fairy Tail, and that they possessed weapons forged with alchemy. She then brings up to everybody that they probably noticed something when they entered the city, which is that there are coal mines here, there are jewels there, and there are a lot of pharmacies, stating that these are all prime materials that are used for alchemy as she suspects that this entire city has deep connections with the Golden Owl Alchemy Guild. And not just wondering what that means, as she just says, this whole city has probably been watching Fairy Tale under orders by Golden Owl. For whatever reason, they're not sure. But the city itself is moved by Golden Owl's o orders. So as a result, not to fought off his opponents, but everybody else was seemingly done in. As things like, come on, don't be stupid. Who's gonna take down Urza and Grey so easily? Obviously, Sting has not been reading this manga as Grey has not had the best moments in this ser in this whole sequel series. But then again, it'd about either be him or Lucy that ends up not getting as many wins. Still, it was a sneak attack, so we gotta give it to him. And Rogue just brings like, come on, there's no way they could beat I all of them either. But Minerva just brings up that they're alchemists, and unlike wizards, they're enemies within. They're not enemies that are in their current level of comprehension. But yeah, they're wondering why Golden Owl will be after Fairy Tail. Sting brings up it's probably the fact that they've done a lot, and perhaps maybe it's some sort of grudge. Not to them flashes back to what the coal miner said, basically like they were supposed to bring him back. And he's like, wait, were they caught? Shocking everybody off guard, which would honestly make sense, because they were supposed to capture Natsu, and Natsu actually puts two and two together. So I'm glad that he figured this out. So, yeah, they were supposed to be brought in alive, not killed. Which makes sense, because these are all, aside from the coal miners, all underhanded tactics to catch everyone by surprise. While their guard was down. Natsu then charges off on his own to try and save everybody. But Sting and Roan tell him, come on, you're the only one in fairy tale left right now. Sabretooth is going to lend you a hand. But then I was like, but I don't want to join for Sabretooth. <laughs> I like how Sting and Roan being like, we're not asking you to join, you dumbass. But yeah, that kind of ends the chapter. Overall, I laughed. This this chapter was funny, not too much happened. Honestly, I feel like this series probably should have, should be going weekly, but I think the bi-weekly schedule is actually better for Mashima in terms of him concentrating on Ian Zero and giving the artist working on 100 Years Quest a bit more time to do the chapters. Either way, I wish there was just a bit more to the chapters because they go by way too quickly now. Oh, but... But still, I enjoyed it, and we're setting up to just Natsu and Sabretooth charging at whatever Gold Owl guild base that there is to save the rest of the, of the crew. Honestly, yeah, I'm actually curious to see what's going on, because we haven't seen anything from Sabretooth since the Alvarez arc, and they didn't do all too much there. Only Sting really got a big moment in that entire arc. So I do want to see Sting and Rogue do some cool stuff, Minerva, see her, how she fights again, and you know showing that you could actually fight. I like Sabretooth and I want to see them do a lot in this arc and I think this is a good way to kind of put more focus on Sabretooth since they were brought in for this arc to help them. So I feel like it'd be nice to get some new interactions between Natsu and, and Sabretooth as they try and save the rest of Fairy Tail and we figure out what Gold Owl is trying to do now that they wanted to capture Fairy Tail specifically. But it probably has to do with the five dragon gods with the final god being Viernus that they need to go and take on, as well as Ignea. So we're definitely going to get some answers there, probably some stuff with Athena, and maybe we'll get some inklings of what Golden Owl has planned. We might get a fight, we might get to see what their guild master and even Athena are going to be uh, capable of. 
and how we might see Gunter in a fight like the Dragon Slayers and see how strong he is in comparison to the guys that actually beat Acnologia. It was a team effort and it was basically all luck, but they still beat him, unlike Gunterina that was one-shotted. But yeah, I enjoyed this chapter, a bit too quick for me, but it was mainly just set up. I left, Nantube is basically Saitama with a series of sneeze, so yeah, not too much going on. I liked it. I can't wait to see these new interactions and how Sabretooth is going to play a role in this arc and what Gold Owl has planned for the Fairy Tale Guild right now. Also, I want to see Jalal do some cool action in this arc because he was also brought in as well. So I feel like we're going to have a bit more focus on Jalal here. Well, what did you guys think? Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below with what do you think this arc is going to be about? What do you think is going to happen? What are the plans that Gold Owl has right now? Let me know and I'll try and talk to you guys in the comments as I do read every single comment and I try to interact as much as I possibly can. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help and it shows you guys enjoy the content on my channel. Now make sure to try and keep up Fairy Tale as much as I possibly can because I am enjoying 100 Years Quest. With all that I've said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.